Good morning, nature lovers. This is Kelly Wenzel, Project Director for Urban Education Outreach, coming to you again from my backyard um, to do a little nature discovery with you all today. So um, as I came outside for a break, I noticed that today's weather, which I can actually see my breath, is uh, completely the opposite almost of what yesterday's weather was. So um, today is kind of uh, cloudy, dreary, um, damp. Yesterday, while it was chilly, it was maybe 54 degrees, it was sunny and beautiful and uh, I spent a lot of time outside yesterday. So thinking about opposites, I thought, well, the weather is the opposite of what it was yesterday. And um, so why don't we look for some opposites in our yard today, just because it would be fun. So um, we're going to take a neighborhood audit today of things that are opposite right in our yard. So once again, I have my homemade worksheet here. Uh, the printer's still out of ink. And uh, while Staples is open, they're short on supply. So we have our homemade worksheet. This activity, by the way, comes from uh, New Jersey Audubon's Bridges to the Natural World. Um, and we'll upload the actual worksheet um, if you'd like to print it out or, or use that uh, one from the activity guide. But here's the one I made today. Um, so again, I always start my journal pages with the same information on top. Um, so my name is Miss Kelly. Today is Wednesday, March 25th, 2020. I am at my house. Like I said before, the weather is cloudy and damp. So I looked on my phone and got my temperature of 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, for those of you who can do a little more challenging math, when we have our degrees Fahrenheit, so this is 40 Fahrenheit, we subtract 32 to get eight, and then we divide that by two and we get about four degrees Celsius. So again, Celsius is the temperature scale that scientists use, so it's always good to hone those skills. Our cloud cover, as you can see, is definitely 100% cloud cover. The complete opposite of yesterday. I didn't see any clouds. Um, it is not raining though. And there really isn't a wind, maybe like a very light breeze every once in a while, but not really anything significant. So again, why do we take our weather? So that if we look back at our journal and we say, hmm, I didn't see any of this today, or you notice a pattern um, of something happening, you can always look, that's always additional data that you have. Uh, when you're doing any activity. So um, you might be looking just at opposites today, but then you could go back in your journal and say, hmm, let's graph the temperature every day. And if you have already included that in your journal, then the data is already there and you just have to graph it. So today, like I said, we're going to do my neighborhood inventory of opposites. And I'm going to try to keep it to natural objects today. Uh, just because I feel like if we look for human-made stuff, it would be too easy. Although certainly, if it's a rainy day and you're stuck inside, you could do this inside your house um, with anything. So this is a great uh, activity to keep in your pocket, no matter what. So the words I have, some of them are from the Bridges to the Natural World activity. Some of them I made up. Curve, tiny, sharp. Be careful if you find something sharp. Uh, warm, that's going to be challenging today. Not living, rough, straight, big, soft, cold, living, smooth, wet, light, thin, new, rotting, round, dry, dark, or heavy. So you see I have the opposites, light, dark. Um, or you could say light as in doesn't weigh much, so I put heavy there. Uh, thick, old, growing, and square. So uh, I'm going to try to go opposite by opposite to see what we find. So I'm sitting right here and I'm very excited to see my first opposite and they're kind of in the same garden bed. So I'm going to zoom in on this plant right here. Does anybody know what that is? I'll give you a hint. I planted it. You can use it in tea or other food. And if you had smelly vision, if I rub the leaves, 
Ooh, that smells so delicious. I like it in hot chocolate. That's right, it's peppermint. So my peppermint has already started growing. So I'm gonna go right over here into my living box and write peppermint. But also right here in my box, there's a lot of other things going on. I don't blow all my leaves in the winter. Uh, it makes good habitat. It also covers my peppermint so it stays nice and toasty. But what's happening to these leaves over time? What's another good reason to leave your leaves in the garden? What happens over time to them? They decompose, right? They'll break down, the rain starts, uh, the rain and wind starts breaking them down. I also have some wood chips in here which will also break down and they become new soil over time, right? So we might see a new, another pile with a better example, but for my opposite, for my chart, I'm going to put living, oops, well, peppermint is living, but it's also growing. That's really what I wanted to put it in. So can things be in more than one box? Absolutely. That's why I gave you a lot of room. You can make a list, right? I'm going to put rotting. I'm going to put leaves. And another word, if you're an older student, for rotting is decomposing, right? Excellent. So I'm going to walk around my yard and see what else we can see. Okay, so I've walked over to the side of my yard and I found this big old stump. So we have a fire pit, which we may examine a little bit later. And so we like to chop wood at my house. We've got a big old wood pile. Here we go. Well, it's little now because we've been having campfires, but so this is one of our stumps. It's big. So if we look on our chart, which category do you think this is going to fall under? Could fall under many. So let's look. The top of this, ooh, it's nice and flat and smooth, right? So I could put in here smooth, I could put um, top of stump. And if I look down here, what's this part of the tree called? Right here on the outside. That's the bark, right? Now this bark on this tree, this was an oak tree. Look at how rough it is. So we could also say, while the top of that stump is smooth, the bark of the stump is definitely rough. Now, hmm, this is a pretty big stump. Look, here's my foot on top. Look how big around that is. You think I can lift it? I'm pretty strong. I go to the gym, but I don't know if I can lift that stump. Let's see. All right, so here I am down by the stump. I've moved my camera. So now I'm gonna try to lift this stump. Who thinks I can do it? Raise your hand. Mm, you have a lot of faith in me. Let's see. Ready? One. Two, three. Uh, ooh, I can't lift it, but I at least rolled it over. Do you think I can lift it from here? Deadlift? Uh, nope. So it is definitely heavy. So I am going to put heavy on my chart. I'll be right back. So, like I said, I put light and then dark, but I put light and then I also put heavy. So I'm just going to circle heavy here. And I'm going to put that tree stump. Whoo! That was definitely heavy. With an exclamation point. So, if we're going light and dark, we could do a couple things, again, right on our tree stump if we wanted to. So look at our contrast in our bark. Here we have light colors on the raised part of the bark. And then down inside, it's dark, right? Or we even have contrast between our light colored leaves 
and our dark colored mud. So both brown, right? But one is light and one is dark. So we could fill out a couple different things on here. We could put leaves, our light color, and we could put dark, we could put mud is dark in color, right? So there are a lot of different things that we could put for light and dark. But I also see another friend down here. Who, who is this guy? Let's see, is he alive? <gasps> he is. He's probably cold, because I uncovered him, right? But who's this guy? He's not moving a whole lot. He's an earthworm, and you can see he is moving. So he is definitely alive. I didn't put slimy on my sheet, but that's certainly, you can find something slimy. What's the opposite of slimy? I'm not really sure. Dry, I guess. There he goes. So we could put slimy, he's living, he's cold. I can feel that he's kind of cold. So I don't know, let's see which box we want to put them in. Up oh, there's another worm friend over there. And under here, looks like we maybe have some egg casings or something like that. So there's a lot of living stuff underneath our log. Very, very cool. So, I don't know, I'll put them in, I'll put them here in living, our worm. He was also cold. Um, we don't have slimy, ooh, he was, uh, we have wet though. We could put worm here and put slimy. Right? Very cool. So now I think I'm done with the log area. Do I just want to leave this log here like this? You know, I turned it over, the worms are hanging out. No, as a good steward of the environment, we always want to put everything back right where we found it. So I'm going to put my log back and then we will go see what else we can see. All right, so there you go. My stump is back in place. So since I kind of showed you my fire pit, we're gonna go over here and see if there's anything inside the fire pit that is natural. It's been a while since we made a fire, but ooh, there's some fun things in here. Let's see. Do you all see these? Oh, let me get a good shot. What's that? Hmm, that came off a plant. I trimmed it a couple days ago, actually a month ago now, I think. Um, they have beautiful purple flowers in the summertime. And my goldfinches love to eat off of them. They're a purple coneflower or echinacea plant. And I think these are kind of, whew, they're not sharp like a knife, but prickly, if you didn't want to say sharp. Look how prickly those are. Prickly or sharp, and you can see how the birds took off all the good seeds. There might be a couple left in there. But I'm going to put in my thing over here, I'm going to put it, my echinacea or coneflower. Uh, head in here. And look at these stems. The overall shape of the plant. They're pretty straight, aren't they? And they're also hard. So like many things, these fit into a couple different, or they're thin, you could say. Um, I'm going to put them as straight, my coneflower stems. Anything else hanging out in my fire pit that I want to look at? I don't really think so. Although I did see something over by my firewood when I was coming over here. There's a couple of cool things. Where'd it go? Oh, look at this. It must have came off the bark before we made a fire. Does anybody know what this is? This is lichen. And one of our teacher naturalists, Miss Dorothy, 
could probably tell you exactly what kind of lichen. I believe it is called a shield lichen because it grows like a soldier's shield. It's flat. Uh, it's kind of flaky. It doesn't really feel like much. It kind of feels like paper. But for our lichen, we could put... Hmm, we could put... Oh, it's thin, right? Our lichen is thin. And another thing on this side, look over here. Look what I found in between the stones. What's this green stuff? Oh, it's so fuzzy. Grows where it's moist. That's our moss, right? So you can find moss in a lot of different places. I love moss. It always makes me feel so, so much at home, I think. So I'm going to finish off with moss. So again, we could um, walk around for a long, long time looking at, at opposites. And some things fit into more categories. But I want to move on so we're not taking too much time to choose your favorite object you found. What is it? So I'm going to put maybe moss. Yeah, I'll put moss as my favorite object. Although it's kind of hard to draw, which we're going to try in a minute. But that's okay. I think I can draw the moss. Um, and what about it is, and here are some opposite words. Beautiful, ugly, hard, soft, peaceful, threatening, straight, curved, exciting, boring. Whatever words you want to describe it with. So... I think my moss is beautiful because I love the color green and because it's soft. And for me, moss is peaceful. It kind of reminds me of home. It's, it's just so soft when you're having a picnic in the woods, you find a nice mossy spot to hang out in. Um, there's nothing straight about it. It's probably all curved if we looked under a microscope. And it's definitely exciting for me because that means I'm outside enjoying the day if I'm with my moss. So let's see if I can draw my moss. And I don't think I'll be able to draw and hold on to my clipboard and my phone at the same time, but we'll see what we can do. Here we go, drawing our moss. So I want you to pick your favorite object and try to draw it, or at the very least, maybe take a picture. But really, I really want you to try to draw your object and if you want to put it on New Jersey Audubon Facebook page or Instagram, we would love to see your entries. Just tag uh, or say Miss Kelly or um, looking at opposites activity. And I want to see what y'all come up with. Um, you can color them in. I'm going to do mine in black and white. So let's see what we can do. Okay. So one of our teacher naturalists, Brendan, who is down at the Nature Center of Cape May, is um, like a superb artist. So Mr. Brenda and Mr. B, please don't be judgmental of my drawing capabilities, but here's my moss that I'm gonna try to draw. So I'm not gonna zoom in too much. I'm gonna sort of draw this shape and here and maybe the edges of our stones. So I don't know, let's see here. You can watch my drawing. So my stone is kind of an oval shape, right? And then there's another kind of oval-shaped stone next to it that kind of has a straighter edge. Like that. And then there's a stone up here that makes that triangle. And then there's sort of a straight stone here. And another straight stone right here and then let's see what does my moss look like it kind of looks like little trees and things like that so I don't know let's give it a whirl so it's kind of like little triangles all up in here and again you could get some colored pencils or markers, even watercolor. Wouldn't that be fun? And you could draw your favorite object. So I don't want to spend all day having you watch me draw, but the moss has some different textures in there, right?
and there's like a little piece of something over here. Oops, somebody's yelling at me. I'm by the bird feeder. They're upset. I need to move. Right? And you could fill in and draw your favorite object. So I'm sort of done drawing for now. I might finish it later and post my drawing on Facebook or Instagram for all of you to see. Um, I hear my friend singing in the back. That's a red-winged blackbird. Very cool. And um, so this is Miss Kelly for New Jersey Audubon. Uh, ecosystems outside. Um, coming to you live from my backyard and the breeze is definitely picked up. So I'm gonna go inside, have some hot chocolate. You all stay safe, be well, and I'll see you next time.